I'm going to share some of my experience with you, the viewer, about two exploration areas we drilled on the Hook project this summer. We're very encouraged with the results, especially what you see before you with this massive clay alteration zone and this beautiful white clay alteration. So I've seen that a few times now on a number of uranium deposits. We were encouraged off our, with our first drill hole, not only with the alteration, but we also saw anomalous radioactivity. So it's an area that definitely needs to be investigated more. Again, going to go over two, two areas, drill hole radioactivity results, very encouraging forward looking statements. I will be making some, I probably already have made some. The Hook project, it's location near infrastructure, very close by to a lot of things. Accio project, which we have identified near surface uranium potential at on the Hook project. And both of these discoveries that we'll discuss are, are within the Accio area, just kilometers away. That alteration is significant. Again, it's all of that rock is clay altered. And that, that bone white, if you look at it very closely, it looks like something that I've seen from the Millennium Millennium deposit. When I first started my career in 2006, I got to go on a field trip with the CIM and I got to see core from Millennium. And it was, the takeaway was that the hundreds of meters of clay alteration and just that bone white really stuck out. It, it, it seared my eyes, let's say. And then when you consider that the, the discovery hole hitting the deposit, which there's your deposit discovery hole comes down hole 40, 29 meters at 0.9%. That's a beautiful discovery hole, but the alteration hole that they followed up on hole 38 was 40 meters east of, of the deposit. But as part of that massive alteration that they saw, they said, Hey, let's go in this area. One of the pieces of the puzzle. So yeah, 2007, a year after I saw Millennium, I am relogging drill core, uh, still with Dennis in mind, ZKO4, ZKO6, and it's that same bone white clay. I brought it up to the group and said, hey guys, you know, I just saw this at Millennium last year. This is pretty encouraging. And there was a few sniffs of, of uranium within this area uh, along structures. I didn't realize that it was actually about 100 meters away from where Dennison did discover Griffin. But that's, I think it emphasizes the story that it's, you can be pretty close by. And if you're seeing this alteration, it's quite significant. 2008, 2010, I was logging drill core from Rough Rider and Rough Rider is known for its massive clay alteration system too. I used to map the pulses of mineralization, which is why I find this whole, this whole thesis fascinating. Because if you look at Rough Rider, I'm highlighted with that red ellipse, hole 10, was drilled about 75 meters away from mineralization. And I've, I've relogged all of these holes and I've I played with all the geochem and there's nothing really significant with hole 10. Hole 11, uh, same thing. The alteration wasn't, wasn't anything compelling. Uh, I, there, I do recall it was 0 0.2 meters at 0.2%. That was the highlight of that drill hole. And it's 60 meters away from mineralization. Hole 13 I, was even less, uh, less altered. Both 13 and 11 did have pegmatites, um, but hole 13 was less altered, and that was 0 0.2 meters at 0.02% was its best hit. So nothing mineralized away, and that's 40 meters away from beautiful Rough Rider high-grade mineralization, which was discovered with hole 12. Uh, absolutely fantastic deposit, Rough Rider. So you can be that close, but that that alteration is very key because you, you see it in, in mined deposits, Eagle Point Underground. And if you look at the equal point system, uh, that purple layer, the clay alteration, it can go for hundreds of meters and be barren, down dip. Very important. These, these are large systems. These aren't tiny. These are massive systems that, that go on for hundreds of meters in at least one direction. Here's an, here's an unconformity type of deposit, which again, massive alteration. You can see that bone white right in the middle of the picture. Uh, above the ore body. What's also interesting in this picture, though, is that yellow area, that limonite above the ore body adjacent to the alteration, because we also have a nice big limonite alteration halo outside of the clay alteration halo. And you can see the, the Lisa gang bending in there. You can see all the structural control in these images, especially that, that one on the far right. That's It's associated with clay, so that's the right type of limonite that you want to see. So we have a very similar type of, of scenario. And again, that scale, Cigar Lake, clay alteration halo, which is in purple, uh, 
200 meters by 200 meters, basically. That's huge. That's a large area of that, ha that you've affected the rocks with. We've defined with three drill holes, an area that's about 100 meters wide, true thickness. And from hole 17 down to hole 21, we've defined about 200 meters close to it of, of clay alteration within there. So this, this system is large. We're seeing the same size of, of fluid systems that we've seen in other, in other deposits. And I have to highlight just uh, something Cameron mentioned about the area. He, he noted the area between the red lines, and it's in there in the legend, porous and permeable, because they, they poured water in this thing, and the water just runs right through it. So there's been a lot of fluids migrating through there. And when we look at this section in this area, just through the fluid model system, First, we imagine what background rock looks like, and that's what it looks like right here. The pink areas are typically the pegmatites. Nothing's happened to this, but when you all introduce a fluid system, such as the, the original one or ones that existed in this area, they've they've been mobilized time and time again, and it's been this iron-rich system, which you need to move uranium with iron, so it's a perfect combination. But you can see in this image where the rocks are, are purplish, they've been cut with later with later fractures and those fractures are bleached and that's a different type of system that comes in and it could be directly related to this this strong clay and bleaching system that we see come in and this is the one of particular notice because this is this is millennium this is griffin this is rough rider this is the same type of alteration as in as within there you throw in the third element that secondary hematite that more oxidized fluid system because this whole secondary and, and old primary hematite it, it's almost as if it's a it's a fluid system it's it's a pumping mechanism you know, you, you want to find that fertile, that enriched, oxygenated system. And so you follow the clay with the secondary hematite, and it's a wonderful environment. When we when we consider the radioactivity within these drill holes, too, that just it really starts to emphasize a little bit more as well, just beyond the clay alteration itself. We're going to look at a cross section through through this area from A to B, and then a long section through C to D. Now you can see the computer in the bottom of the image and that's attached to a wire and the wire goes down the drill pipe. That's downhole gamma probe. There's a probe attached to that. It's about three meters long and it goes down and we run it down. We run it up and it collects radioactivity of the surrounding rocks. And that is the information that is presented in front of you. That is the radioactivity of the of the rocks down beneath the, the earth. One thing I, I love to do is I love to play with statistics and I discover I, we've we have a background source hole 11 which is fairly unaltered and and pretty uniform it's a good area to include as as a thesis for all of the background rocks in the area and so we can establish a radioactivity constraint and we can say let's look at anything above 50 because anything beneath 50 is all within background and it's noise so we don't want to look at the noise so we remove that and we can see pegmatites really pop out that's the background system we want to avoid. Now I've, I've established an altered versus fresh. We want to look at everything within that altered section above that dashed line, because that's where the fluids have come through. And theoretically the fluids would have moved and scavenged all of the radioactive materials within its system. We want to see if there's any movement within there. So we can ignore anything that is beneath that dashed line because that's in the fresh rock. So we remove the background of these. We apply the clay alteration. And immediately, hole 17, you can see where we have probably the, the better radioactivity um, occurring within hole 17. It occurs within the clay alteration, similar to hole 16, similar to hole 21. The system seems to get larger as we go at depth. Well, at least there's more radioactivity measured over the, over the width of hole 21 than 16 and 17. So there seems to be that correlation as we go deeper. Is there a target down there? Now, if we look at that long section going from south to north, hole 22 is in the south, hole 23 is in the north. We have that altered fresh um, horizon there, so we ignore anything beneath that dashed line. We remove our background and again, apply our clay alteration where they occur from south to north. It also looks like the radioactivity increases. So this gives us a, a vector to move forward that when we combine that information, it looks like it's pointing right there in the middle. Kind of looks like an avocado in a way. But the whole area to the north there becomes very perspective. And that 
it, that's how we use all of this information to target moving forward. We still have hundreds of meters of, of exploration ground within this. It is easy to find a carrot and just follow that thing down. So it's a, it's a big fluid system that we certainly cannot walk away from. Now, Accio, uh, for, for anybody who knows the company, we have near-surface mineralization at our Accio deposit highlighted by the red star within the red circle. That area that, that I was just talking about with all that clay alteration is about six kilometers to the south southwest of Accio. So very perspective and very near. Kind of makes a nice, nice little uh, proximity play. But then we've also got another area, Hole 9, which is about seven and a half kilometers, eight kilometers northeast of Accio. And then we released some news in, in uh, on July 17th, uh, very encouraging radioactivity results. And that I, th I think what we're seeing there could be similar to other, other type of deposits as well. Uh, similarly, we have seen a large alteration system in there for a few hundred meters. We only put one hole into each side and hole 10, we did intersect the radioactivity on the Western side. When we look at the core, uh, the, the top part of the radioactivity anyway, it's, it's very quartz rich hematized pegmatite. And the idea is that the, the radioactivity came in with the hematite, or it could have been there to begin with. There are ideas and, and some, there are some academic ideas out there that do believe that the pegmatites could have been the source for some of these uranium deposits. Uh, could, could certainly look true when you look at pea patch, for example, which is in the Key Lake area, but there's, uh, you can see the pegmatite in the background, quartz rich, and you can see the, the mineralization coming in with the hematite fluids. So can we find the right area where something like that would have occurred? Similarly, looking at the Griffin deposit, uh, Dennis and Mines, their, their Griffin deposit, uh, the orange unit being pegmatite, and you can see the red mineralization, which would be considered um, ore, or, or sorry, the re red, you, red ore lens, yes. Red ore lens within the pegmatite, um, it really, really looks encouraging. And again, that, that alteration from Griffin how close were we really with hole 10? Um, and so, so hole 10, you can, you can see other examples with pegmatites within mineralization, but now it's just a matter of waiting for the chemistry from both of those. Hole 10 was drilled a lot earlier than hole 21 or hole 16. So we should expect the, the results from hole 10 before, well, obviously before the clay, but both areas are very encouraging. We've got 5 million in the bank for exploration in 2025. And we've got, we've just identified two new areas that either already have anomalous radioactivity or have the large scale fluid potential of, of massive deposits. I think what I've identified throughout here in all these deposits that are associated with these clay alteration, they're large scale deposits. They're, they're your 50 million pound, they're your 300 million pound deposits. Can we be seeing something like that within either of these areas? Exploration program 2025 looks very encouraging next year. So we'll definitely, we'll, we'll follow up on some of these for sure. Thank you very much for watching. It has been, uh, it's, it's been an interesting year, very beautiful. And we're looking forward to seeing what happens next year. Thanks for watching again. Watch some of the other videos on the Or group. Take care.